All right, everybody, mullet engine is done. Watch the video here. I'm gonna teach you stuff, answer your questions. You're gonna see how this is all done. All right, everybody, mullet engine is done. Just finishing up the intake manifold. You're gonna see the cluster that this thing was that I fixed that made it. Not Cletus's problem, that was my problem because I had a little design issue. So that's all fixed. We're just putting the final touches on the, on the uh, intake manifold, but otherwise this thing is done. So watch the video, answering all of your questions. So in between breaks of the time lapse and stuff, I answer questions posed by all the people, uh, channel members, subscribers, everybody that's on here that asks the question. Well, not everybody, can't answer all the questions, but answered a bunch of those questions like, why are the pistons black? What about the lifter? What about the camshaft? What about the rods? What about the oil pump? What about that timing belt? I answer all those questions. So watch and enjoy. So funnily enough, the hardest thing about this entire job for rebuilding mullet engine is actually fixing this intake manifold and so i got everything all tore apart here and so i'm trying to i need to figure out and make the fuel rails right now of course there's a couple little oh, no, sorry it goes like this the fuel rails are like this and they're touching each other so i got to figure out a way of getting these to be able to get the injector in them and get them farther apart like this so if they were like right here they'd be fine and one of the things that you'll see is uh here it needs to have this extended tip injector in it the extended tip injector is actually the problem with what it's doing and this is a little bit of free super tech when it is in the hole like that that is the bottom of the runner right there. And when that it, injector tip is not extended, it basically is ends up being like right there. And what it does is that makes the fuel puddle in that channel. So we put I put an extended tip injector in there because it gets it off of the floor and shoots it up into the port. So it doesn't puddle because uh, with a standard, standard length injector it runs like crap. Uh, very hard to do on because this is this injector is just a street drive. So this thing is only driving and doing low RPM stuff. Doesn't really care when it's at high RPM, high air speed across the port. But at lower air speed, it puddles and it tries to run on the floor of the port and then run over the short turn radius. So I'm gonna figure out how to make this all work. That's it. All right. So what we're doing right here is measuring main clearance. Main clearance because of the aluminum block. And the steel cap makes this a little bit different here. So we're actually going to set this thing up at two and a half, basically two and a half, two and about four, three tenths, um, because the black grows as it gets warm.
Alrighty, now let's look at uh, why, or let's actually, connecting rod clearance is at three, three thousandths on the connecting rod. Now, why are the pistons black? Let's see, just about everybody asked that question. Why are the pistons black? You can see here it is black everywhere. Now, it turned a little color up here because this has been running and it just has carbon on top they are black because that is a what they call a triple coat at diamond these are diamond piston mgb connecting rod and what this is is a hard anodize with teflon impregnation we do it the entire piston so the entire piston ring grooves everything skirts pins everything is done now, when they do the pin hone, it ends up taking the, the coating off of it. Uh, but it is in the grooves, everything, and it makes a, in my opinion, a much better piston. As a matter of fact, uh, it is file hard. Like, you can run a file across here, and it doesn't touch it unless you really, really push down on it. So, it is a hardening heat treat process. It is not just a coating. They know, it's not something they spray on. This is a actual heat treat process that is done with the piston. That is why these are black. Other ones that I'll do are gold colored. If they're gold colored, that means I didn't do the triple, which is uh, extra with Teflon. The gold one is just a straight out hard anodizing, where it's the heat treat anodizing process. That's the important part. The black is nice. I'm not sure if it's really worth all that much. But uh, on these ones, it just happened to do it. Well. You just saw me struggling a little bit with this last connecting rod. So what I do is we put this together and then I come through and check all my side clearance. And it's like, why is what the heck? This one is not going on. This is really weird. What is going on? And then I go over to check all the other side clearances just to see what's, you know, roughly see what's there. No movement. Take a look and measure. And... There was a issue because big block Chevrolet connecting rods are 990 thousandths wide. That's how wide it is right here. I checked the old rod. Yep, 991, so 1 thousandths over. Check this rod, and must be some kind of mistake because they are 1 inch wide, not 990. Uh, 990, 991, right around there. So typically where we would have pretty close to in between 15 and 20 thousandths of side clearance. These are bigger than that. And so now I'm going to have to take this all back apart and side clearance the rods. It's not the end of the world uh, for a engine builder such as myself. But uh, if this was, uh, you know, the home built project, that <laughs> would be a bugger. Uh, and if this one happened to have gone in and pretend that's something you didn't check and these things were tight like this it will bind right up do serious damage first off it would make no horsepower because it would be bound up second of all it would probably kick all the freaking rods right out of it so we're going to pull this thing all the way apart we're going to side clearance the connecting rods add clearance to them just thin them up on <clears throat> i'll figure out which side i'm going to do it on i'm going to do it on the uh yeah, I'll do it on the inside, not on chamfer side. I'll do it on this inside, and we'll then be able to, since these ones are on, this one is probably like two thousandths tighter or something, just tight enough that it wouldn't go on properly. The rod went all the way up in there. So I'd like to have about 15 thousandths, so we're going to take seven thousandths off of each connecting rod to make them where they should be. Well, also turns out that because these uh, rods are a little bit wider down in this section here, a little bit thicker, a little bit more material, just hits the block right here. So 
we're going to have to take it all the way back apart and do some clearancing on the block also. Yeehaw! But it's all typical. This is, this is why we make the big bucks, so they say. Haha. Uh -huh. All right, so we finally got back to where we left off yesterday, which is we now have side clearance, which uh, is, oh, that is about 15. That's where I want it. Everything moves free, is free, works nice, all torqued up. That was just for FYI, that's 85, uh, 95, 85. 105 on torques so we're gonna keep on plugging on I will put the uh, start working on getting the camshaft in this thing do that and then we'll put the rest of the bottom end together Perfect. That's uh, 110, actually 109.5, but that'll retard. So, exactly where it was. That's all good. Now we'll move on. All right, so got the camshaft in, got it agreed. Some of the number one questions here. Uh, so, Matthew Schaefer and Phil R., channel members, asked, why do you use the timing belt? A lot of other people ask the same thing. Why do you use a timing belt versus a timing chain gear? Uh, timing chain and gear is is fifty dollars worth of material, and is about as old school as you can get. If you want the, the derogatory answer to it, uh, the better answer is these belts are awesome. They work great. They've been proven over the last 20, 30 years, however long Jessel's had these things out. Other people manufacture the belts. They are extremely strong and. They do do a better job of, of uh, controlling harmonics. Now, if you're looking for maximum durability, strength, um, all of that, you go with like uh, my SMX or uh, even that Hemi over there that we just got done. If you haven't seen that Hemi, go back one video. You'll really enjoy it. It's long because it's a complete buildup. But anyways, that has a gear drive on it. So you can actually see the gear drive right in the previous video, how that all works. That is extreme bulletproof if anything ever happened to that the whole engine junk anyways because i mean that, that's just pertinent near indestructible now do belts ever break mm, occasionally very very not very often we put a new belt on this so every time we freshen up or put something on we just put a new belt on the only reason i've ever seen the belt break in here is if something internally in the engine broke or if something got caught in between the belt which, ironically enough, is the exact same reason why you would ever probably break a chain. Something else in the motor broke, something like that. So, that's why we use the belt drives. They are better. They're much easier to, to, to degree. And... Well, that's it.
well, and I've broken my fear. I've broken a couple timing chains in my life, and have pretty much vowed not to use them as much as humanly possible. Have not broken belts. Anything can happen, but uh, have not broken belts yet. Now, you also see we uh, got everything all torqued up. Went over the bottom end, did that, gave you clearances, gave you all that stuff. So I'm going to continue on. I'm just looking over uh, questions from people. And I'll go over the final questions probably when we get things done. And camshaft. Oh, po uh, the camshaft. Since camshaft's in there, I polished up the one lobe. It's like a million bucks. Did it make it smaller? I guess maybe it made it like a thousand or two thousand smaller, which is nothing. That is literally nothing. The engine will never know it. Nobody will ever know it. Can't see it from the stands. Engine doesn't care. Uh, it is It is literally nothing. That is just a, a minor polishing. Be happy that it all polished up and was really good. And that question was from uh, James Simmons. I think that's Simmons. Simones. I think it's Simones, sorry. And uh, he's one of our channel members too. So he asked a question on camshaft, what it would do to the camshaft by doing that. And oh, We'll go over the lifters here real quick while I'm going to be starting to put the oil pan on, oil pump, get that stuff. Actually, I'll come back to the lifters later. Okay, so you just saw me put the oil pan on, forgot that I got to punch holes for the for this uh, block and oil pan setup, so uh, the, doesn't use the stock oil pan bolts. So did that, put it all together, so decided to put studs in here, pulled the thread out of that block right there, so took it back off one more time, and we'll put a helicoil in there. Not going to bother showing you all that, but I figured, all right, let's talk about the oil pump, because that is a big comment too. So people have questions about the oil pump. Um, yes, guaranteed 1000% a dry sump is a better system. There is absolutely no doubt about it. Yes, Cletus could put in a uh, Accu sump for the big end of the track. Yes, would it help out? Yeah, absolutely. Is any of that needed? Apparently not because this thing is pretty Billy bad boy. It's working. Everything's awesome. Why? Uh, I, I'm more than happy to always make something better. It's a pretty big deal to put a dry sump in the car. Like, a really big deal to put the dry sump in the car. And since this is working, I know Garrett doesn't really want to do that. So, and it and it is living. It's, it's fine. Obviously, by how much it's run, how many passes it has, how the bearings look, it's fine. So, it's really hard kind of to justify... Uh, making him do a whole bunch of work in the car to make that make that go so we're going to uh, I'm just gonna fix this put this oil pan on and then uh, catch you on the flip side
All right, so you see that we have the heads on. You see that it copper coated the head gaskets. I already showed you all the hoops, receiver grooves, all that other stuff. Uh, sonar heads are all set up. You saw all that. Torqued. Uh, we torqued these to 70 pounds, but that's because of the peanut butter. And then you see that I actually torque, untorque, torque, untorque, and torque again, and then go over and recheck everything. Inside head studs, we torque those 45 with the peanut butter. So now we're getting ready to uh, put the uh, rocker arms on. Now, going back to the cylinder heads, there's a lot of stuff done to these cylinder heads. We modify these cylinder heads. We don't just bolt on box stock cylinder heads. They're modified by us. Can't tell you how to do that. Oh, that was that reminds me. Somebody asked, uh, somebody, quite a few people asked, tell me what the cam specs are. No, can't have it. There you go. So that's one of those things I won't share to you. No offense. I got, I got, I got to have some reason <laughs> for people to come to me. So, uh, anyways, you can't know the camshaft specs. Not even gonna give you any real rough dimensions because it just your application really doesn't apply to this and to the way I do things. So it really wouldn't do any much good, anyways. Um, then I had a question from uh, Brian Vandal about I was wondering, and he's a member, channel member. I was wondering if there was a reason that the lifter failed. So the one lifter that failed in this thing, it was on number one exhaust. Yes, uh, there's a perfectly good reason for it. The reason is it was running. It was moving. It was exceeding its limit. And it hung in there for a really long time. Why the other ones are all real nice and why that one in particular went, no real reason. Um, we're exceeding, but this is, the easiest way to think about it is, um, you know why they, I, I, I don't own a Hellcat, but I believe that if you turn it into the race mode or T-switch or whatever it is, you guys I'm sure can all comment and correct me on this if I'm wrong, I believe that it voids your warranty. Why do you think that is? And this, that, and that thing doesn't even make a thousand horsepower because horsepower kills parts, <laughs> big time. Uh, exhaust pressure, so much exhaust pressure on the lifter, um, it's gonna fail. I think that they've hung in there really, really well and they, I normally would have rebuilt them and just done general maintenance on them long before Cletus sent this thing back to me. So I think they held in really well. So don't look at the stuff and go, oh, I wonder why it failed. I think it should have a better part. No, the thing is, has exceeded expectations in every way, shape, or form possible. Now, uh, why are we going to the Jessels? The Jessels are a really nice high-end rock uh, lifter. The rocker arms are too, obviously. Uh, but the lifters are really nice high-end lifters. They're not the ones I originally used, which is fine. Uh, I like the Jessel stuff. It's really good. I have a uh, different preference. I would normally run either Morels or Iskies. And I think this originally had a set of Crowers in it, which is also really good. Um, a really high quality lifter is a high quality lifter to a certain extent. Um, Garrett had a deal going on with uh, Jessel and we put Jessel lifters in this thing because we already had Jessel rockers and Jessel belt drive. So it stuff is really nice and it's a really high quality. Is it going to change anything? No, I don't think so. Um, are they going to last as long? Uh, I would assume so. Uh, you got to stay up on all your maintenance and everything. Um, are they significantly better? No, I don't think so. Uh, are they really good? Yes, they're really good. So we're going to, uh, Mitch is putting on the uh, rocker arm shafts, or I'm sorry, the rocker arm stands. And we're gonna be putting in uh, all the push rods and lashing up the valves. Uh, I did have a question on the uh, rocker arms and I can't remember, I didn't know I actually used the Sportsman rocker. So these are a, uh, no, nope, see that's a that's a, a non-bearing one. Uh, I'm not a super big fan of putting bearings out on the end of the uh, on the rocker arm tip. I kind of like them without. I think it makes it a little bit stronger shaft and one less area for a bearing to fail. So I'd much rather have a, a bushing out there. And I'm about a hundred percent sure that that is. Cause I think the the wheel is bigger on the uh, ball bearing one. Obviously it's bearing in here. Um, our Manton stuff that we use is uh, bushing. 
uh, bushing and bushing right up there. So we're gonna uh, just continue putting this thing together and we'll now take a look at the uh, uh, intake manifold that we've been working on because it was a bugger, <laughs> a real bugger. Uh, but I got it fixed and I made a really nice fix um, that makes it just super nice. So they'll be able to service it and do everything at the track. Okay, forgot, I wanted to say this too. Uh, make sure you hang in there because I'm gonna do the final round of questions and answers about Cletus's engine, uh, some other stuff, how much horsepower, more horsepower it's gonna make. Is it gonna last longer? Is it all that other stuff? I'm gonna answer that at the end. And as a side note, I want you guys to understand there's probably about half a million people watching this. I have uh, getting out, getting close to 200,000 subscribers of mine. Like, subscribe, get my account up. Um, don't think that you're the only one that calls us. So please, uh, if you're calling us to ask me how to do something and how you can uh, build your engine, how you can do this, and you're not having me do anything, I, that's why I do these videos. I do these videos to help people get smarter uh, go to my Steve tag so you understand how to do something because I can't have half a million people literally call me or email me questions about how do I do this? How do I do that? I, I would never get anything done for Cletus. I would never get his engine done if I answered every phone call that people call in <laughs> asking me for free help. I do the videos so it's free so you guys can watch that stuff. Go to my Steve tag. I cover a lot of things to help you guys out and get everybody up to speed and smarter than uh, maybe than what they were before on engine stuff. And I'm more than happy to do that, but please don't expect me to be able to answer all your phone calls or all your emails. All right, so to show you what I'm having to figure out on this intake manifold, you saw that the thing is all tore apart and I'm putting it back piece by piece. And so here's those little extension pieces that, that uh, Cletus put on, which is fine. There's no problem with that. It's just all this stuff is so tight because of that injector, as I showed you there earlier. And what, uh, what we're doing here is the fuel rail needs to come in and let's see roll there we go oh, darn it. i had this all figured out so hold on there you go so the rail needs to come in just like this the injector's in put it on the injector and just kind of roll it on like so okay 
problem is, is when the, the little brackets are on, it is nearly impossible to do that. In fact, it pretty much is impossible to do it. And it's pretty much impossible to take the brackets off and put the brackets back on. So let's go back and I'll show you what Brock's working on for me. So I kind of designed up a little two-piece bracket that comes in and still clamps the rods, but we'll come in and it'll two-piece go together. Kind of so I can roll it in. So it'll be like this and I roll the, roll the fuel rail in. Click. Clicks in like that. Put the bolt through it. All right, so we'll come in here to Brock's office. Turn down his jams. All right, so without totally screwing up his stuff, let's see here. Dang it. Nope. That's how you do it. There you go. <laughs> so you got the machine out there running. So this is one part of this. Now, that's it. obviously, it's very blown up. And this is the, the half part. So this part will bolt onto the block or onto the intake manifold like that. And then the other part he's making will be this upper part right here. So it'll come in and it'll basically go, I'll turn that fuel rail and it'll go click right onto the bottom of that. In fact, the rock can probably show you how to do that. I am, this is, Technically, this is about as far as I can get right here. Is I can I can move it around. Uh, but that's why I pay him for. <laughs> so, anyways, let's go see what he's doing. All right. So here is the that first part that we're just seeing right there. Hey, Brock, you want to show us the whole piece assembly, how it goes together? Yeah. So that's the bottom piece, and so just finishing up machining those. So we're gonna make all four and replace these. Also, both rails will be able to do that, and it's gonna should give us a lot of room and make things easy to uh, move that. There you go. Just like that. Make it go right, right? Uh, no, I have to animate it. <laughs> I could, but not in two seconds. Yeah, all right. So that's basically how that whole whole thing works. And uh, there you go. So it'll kind of like, it'll roll into there and then, so put it together. Bing. So right now it's one piece, which makes it impossible to get the bolts in, out, and do the whole thing. This way we can leave it all bolted together, slide it in, and it just goes click, goes in there, put one bolt through it on each one of these, and it it's ready to rock and roll. All right, Garrett, this is one's for you. Check this out. So I showed you the new mounts because even I could not get this thing apart. It took me up to my way too long and not doable in, in the car. So I showed you guys how the uh, how we machine these, what my idea was here. So one rail is completely in. The injectors are all in. So you put this in here, just like so. You come down, you get it lined up with your little injectors. Excuse me, you gotta work my head in there. Like so, and like so. And then you go, whoop, turn it up, it's in. Put the center bolts in right here. Like so, tighten them up, all done. In like Flynn, awesome. So, that's super cool. All right, everybody, you just saw the entire build up of this. We just got done with the manifold, made those fuel rails flip up. I'm, I'm feeling quite proud of myself for thinking of how to make that thing work and be able to e easily get in and out. But anyways, uh, I'm just gonna button this intake manifold up because it's not actually a uh, I don't have the injectors in. I haven't glued it all on yet. So I just set it on here But I wanted to give you the final answers to some of these questions now if you're a, a channel member And if I forgot to say your name, I'm really sorry there We had a lot of questions and some of them repeats and some of them I answered individually and uh, replied right back to you uh, other ones we're gonna hit right here. So uh, firing order what is the firing order? 
It's a standard big block Chevrolet firing order. It is a mullet uh, engine full water jacket. It's a half fill. All right. In the block. How much boost can the new style rods take? And what's the limiting factor on the engine now? <laughs> okay. So uh, how much more boost can the new rods take? No more boost. How about that? Uh, well, I'll come back and answer that one in a second. Then one quick question. What's up from here? How much a bit? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Okay, and what's the limiting factor on the engine now? Same question as this. Uh, let's go here. Oh, there is. Let's see. It has nothing to do with it. Oh, I, this is my favorite question right here. Why are you so cool? I was born this way. I really can't help it. I also have an amazing sense of humility and sense of humor all at the same time. It's amazing. Okay. Now let's go over to uh, next question for real. But I did, I, somebody actually did ask me a question. Why are you so cool? He's my new favorite person in the world. Um, let's see here. Uh, back to what's up from here. How much more power can we get? Okay. I need, <laughs> need to explain something here. This is, this engine has been exceeding what it was ever intended to do. That doesn't mean that the Cletus can't do it. Doesn't mean that it won't do it because obviously it has. I built this to be in that 670, 680 range. Now, horsepower wise, just to give you information. So the, it is like a, uh, it is not a linear line of performance of like 70, 690, 680, 670, 650. It is like this. <laughs> So it is like 70, 680, 670, 650. I mean, it is it, it is a astronomical increase. Exponential. Exponential. Thank you. Kyle just corrected me. I was trying to think of the word, and I'm old, and I can't remember it. And it is exponentially increasing the faster you want to go. The difference between a 640 and a 630 is huge. The difference between a 630, 620, or a 590 is is astronomical off the chart it is astronomical off the chart so i didn't design this to be making 57 pounds of boost it's taking it it's doing it or it has done it uh, i have told garrett several times that you are exceeding what we built this for if you wanted to do have something that makes 60 70 80 pounds of boost you need an smx um, the limiting factors on these are you have to understand uh, we could put my smx rods in here okay but then you really need the smx crank well then the block is the problem because the block uh it's cast cast parts will crack so then you need a billet, billet water jacket block well then all of a sudden by the time you do all the upgrades to this to make it do more and more horsepower it just ends up being a completely different engine so it's not what we built this engine for we really had no idea that it would be able to get mullet to go so fast so they're doing a great job of it uh, great job, everything from the tune to driving and everything. It's a great job doing what they're doing. Um, so uh, they might be able to get this thing go faster. Uh, it is exceeding. This is leaning on this with all its might. It is, this is, uh, it is doing more than it should, period. All right. So that is the one. Oh, the very last question that uh, I have here. Will Cletus be able to win sick week with his new setup? No, he can't, because I'm gonna win it. I'm Steve Morris, have a great day.